So my brake power booster I had rebuilt by Power Brake Exchange of San Jose. Um, this is one of the first things I had done like three years ago and um, they did a great job. I believe it was about a hundred and twenty bucks or so. They also do master cylinders but this car didn't come with a master cylinder. So I ended up buying a new one. I've got a brand new master cylinder. It's a Phil's Rotary master cylinder. It looks pretty darn good. Not sure where Phil's Rotary has these master cylinders made or assembled, but the hoses are made in USA. And that might be because there's a specification that needs to be met by the Department of the Transportation, DOT. Unknown, but that's how it is. Okay, let's put it on. Get my hoses pointing in the right direction first. And then uh, down and around we go. Apply the nuts to the backside interior firewall. Flange nuts going on the back. These are 8x125. I actually had to fix one of the threads. It was a little bit buggered, couldn't get the nuts started. So I pulled out a die, took care of that. Here we go. You might want to apply the pin that goes into this rod prior to actually tightening all these. So let's take a moment and do that. I do recall having the pin plated, so I go to my nut and bolt assortments, and here's my pin for the power booster and a new cotter pin. They've been patiently waiting here for this day to arrive. All right, let's get it put on. Okay, before cranking down on these bolts, let's get the pin put back in for the brake pedal. Coming in from the back side here. Power pin. You cannot go from the top. And there we go. Now I can crank down these 14 millimeter head bolts. I did look in the manual for a torque spec for these bolts. Not able to find one. So. So going by the charts available to us, that means we should be torquing this down to eight millimeter size with a hardness factor of eight. It's 13 to 20 foot pounds. I don't know if my torque French will fit in here. So I'm not gonna worry about it really. I'm just gonna snug them up good. I think I can get my torque wrench on this top one for sure. These the ones on this side for sure. And they will. Might not be on camera, but it'll I'll do it. I have resolved to use factory hose clamps whenever possible. So the ones coming on this Phil's Rotary Master Cylinder are being replaced. It would be nice if I could find the fiber coated brake line that was used on a factory brake setup. I have looked around extensively for it here in the US. No luck. Ooh. Is that going to be too small? So these are typical aftermarket hose clamps with the band. 
Um, they came off the master cylinder coming from Phil's Rotary. I was hoping to replace them with original equipment Mazda clamps, and there's different types, none of which are quite right. Original hose clamps on a brake master cylinder was a wire, and it was uh, wrapped around and then twisted up. So looking at the different ones here, you know, there's this type here. It came on some of the smaller hoses and it's it would go on it's really tight I'm not sure it's prudent to use that uh, the other two options are you know there's clamps like this that came off of various areas of the car I'm not sure that's going to be good for a brake hose and of course these these were the original heater hoses that would work and even though it's pretty huge I could screw it down and make it work but I kinda need these to go back on the heater hoses so I think what I'm going to end up doing, reluctantly, is using the aftermarket band clamps for the brake hose, going from the reservoir to the master cylinder. So what I'm going to do now is cut our brake hoses that go from the reservoir to the master cylinder to length. So I'm going to snip it here. I've kind of taken a look at where it needs to go. And usually I would do this with my tin snips. I took my tin snips to the other garage because I'm going to clean them up and have them replated. Um, this, the big tin snip, you're going to see that tin snip prior to the plating in the headliner episode. They're not here. So, giant pair of scissors. There's one. Scissors, not the sharpest tool. I can fix that. Not the sharpest tool. Neither is the operator, but it's enough. Let's get this reinserted here. Plug this bad boy in there. Those wire clamps that are OEM for these would be awesome. It'd be just as awesome as having the fiber hoses, but couldn't find them. And I'm not really gonna do the research on how to do the wires. I know guys have done it. Looks really good. Looking good. All right, let's get this reservoir reattached. The original master cylinder that came on this 76 RX3 I had removed some time ago. I needed it on the green car back when my green car was the daily driver. So during my restoration here I decided to get a brand new one from Phil's Rotary rather than rebuilding the one on the green car. It was just easier. I didn't have to go wrenching on that car to remove it. And uh, you know Phil's had brand new ones so easy. But it is a little bit different one of the lines doesn't bolt right up. Something's different about it. Let's find out what that is. Let's go have a look at the green car. Okay, right off the bat, I can see what's going on here. There's a port coming out of the top, and this is the tube that won't fit. Um, the one coming from Phil's Rotary comes out down here. So it makes it about six to 10 millimeters too far away by coming out and down there. So I will need to do one of two things. I either need to make a new hydraulic hose to replace this one, or I need to rebuild my old master cylinder, which I do believe is the original from that 76 RX3. Many thanks to Greg at Coast Clutch and Brake in Santa Maria. 
Took my line in the back, zip bang. Eight minutes later, I had a new brake line for nine bucks. Thanks again, man. I wanted to show you the line that Coast Clutch and Brake made for me, but um, you know, we've moved a few times and everything's in a box. So I blew through like 20 boxes and can't find it. So it'll have to be part of another episode. But essentially what happened is Coast Clutch and Brake took my old line because, you know, of course they don't have metric fittings, right? So they got to use the fittings off my old line. They cut it in half, used my fittings, made a new line that's like two or three centimeters longer. So we'll put that on the car later on. And uh, yeah, as far as moving goes, we've moved numerous times and there'll be a story about why that happened and what the deal is. And in essentially, in a nutshell, uh, we sold our uh, home in the Bay Area to pick up uh, a really nice sailing yacht. And uh, we've got a YouTube channel for that where we learn to sail and sail on people's yachts and then figure out we need our own yacht and then go shopping. And then, of course, there's lots of boat maintenance and repair, so we can talk shop about boats. But not here, though. This show, Let's Talk Shop, is all about the Mazda RX-3 restoration. But check it out. Click Boom Sail. I'll put a link at the very end here where the pretty girl is, but yeah, go to YouTube, click Boom Sale, subscribe, and uh, come along for the ride. It's gonna be great. Coming up next, we disassemble the fuel tank. The float is almost larger than the hole. Gonna test it, see if I can get a reading on this puppy. Scope it with a fiber optic camera and get it ready for a cleaning and sealing process. Click our icon to subscribe and don't miss out on our upcoming videos. Peace out, brother.